Good afternoon, everybody. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, uh, I would kindly ask if if you can do so um, and follow me along on the study of uh, the parables of Jesus Christ. I believe there are forty. Yes, there are forty that I'm going to be doing um, in the next forty days. I did the first one yesterday. If you um, would like to go check it out, uh, this is the second one that I'm going to do today. One thing I wanted to touch on real quickly was that um, I noticed I was looking at some of my videos and I noticed a trend. And the trend is that my videos, the videos that get the most views and likes and everything, or not even, not likes, but views, are the ones that have titles or subject headings where doom and gloom, um, you know, destruction, where bad things, not good things. It's it's kind of funny that I that tends to be the case. Um, and as I look at all the channels that I that I follow myself on YouTube, I see the same thing with their videos. Their videos, which has a lot of uh, bad news or doom and gloom, um, they get the most views. Which is sad. It's kind of sad that society is looking for doom and gloom stories and not for good stories. Um, and the same thing with mine. Um, my my uh, videos that I post are about the rapture and bad things that are coming and happening in the world. Um, have gotten a lot of views and then the ones that are speaking about Jesus Christ and the good things of Christ and you know who he is and everything get fewer views but anyway whatever um, as I prayed and as the Lord speaks to me um, you know these videos that I post if only one person watches it then it's I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the person that the Lord had intended for this video to touch but I pray that many more will be touched by but anyway so um, the second parable that I want to share with you guys and this is no in no sequential order and it's just I just the way I wrote them down two years ago and as the Holy Spirit just led me through scripture gave me discernment and understanding and I just like I said yesterday I just wrote and wrote and wrote so I'm not adding too much to what I wrote two years ago I'm just basically just sharing with you guys what the Holy Spirit gave me two years ago the second parable is the parable of the wise and foolish builders one, this is a parable that's very, um, very popular that a lot of people know about. Uh, you can find this parable in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. And then you can find it in Luke chapter 6, verses 46 through 49. I'm not going to read the parable per se. You can go read it yourself. But I'm going to give you uh, the gist of the understanding that I got from... Uh, reading this parable with the Holy Spirit uh, explained to me or showed me what it meant. So it's about the, the, the wise and foolish builders. So I, I wrote, a wise builder will build his house on a firm foundation, an immovable rock. A house with a firm, steady foundation will require many resources, much time, dedication, and attention to details. A house built on such a foundation will more than likely withstand storms and even earthquakes the stronger that foundation the greater the storm it will withstand jesus teaches us in this parable that he is the rock upon which we must build our spiritual house and his word his teaching and our devotional time and prayer are the resources that we need that we use to build our foundation the more resources we apply in our quote unquote building the stronger it'll be but unlike an on actual physical building which we build the foundation once our spiritual foundation requires daily dedication to it because the storms of life come more often than the storms of nature um what it is is we need to build our firm foundation on christ our rock and um, to be able to have a firm and strong foundation, you can't you can't build it with just you know spending time in the Word of God just one day, or you know just doing the things that the Lord calls you to. You can't do it with just spending time in prayer for a minute or whatever, just to have it as a list, something you you check off your list to do. So we must spend a lot of time a lot of resources, our resource, which is our time and our dedication to the Lord, to have a very firm and strong house on the foundation. We don't build the foundation. The foundation is Christ. The house is what we build on it, which is our time and dedication to the Lord. The foolish builder 
is one who builds his life on a weak foundation, one made out of quote unquote sand. He does this because it's usually quick to build and can be constructed of the cheapest resources. It requires very little work. And so it is with the believer who seeks a part-time relationship with the Lord. They look for a relationship of convenience, a relationship that won't require too much, too much of their time and dedication. The problem is when storms hit, this person's spiritual house will come crumbling down with just the slightest wind. This type of believer will usually find himself rebuilding his house and after numerous attempts and frustration sets in, they usually give up on their walk with the Lord. It's a tough lesson, but we are responsible for practicing what we learn through Scripture. Again, you can't expect to um, have a strong foundation, a strong faith, a strong relationship with the Lord if you don't want to give the resources that's required to build that strong relationship, that strong foundation. And the resources, as, as I said, are time, dedication, devotion, prayer, everything, obedience, everything that, that comes with our walk. So, um, and then we, we find, I'm pretty sure a lot of you out there who are believers can attest to this, that when the world is crumbling down around us, when things seem so bleak, we still feel hopeful. We still have that peace of the Lord that's within us. And it's because our house is built on a strong foundation. So I pray that if you are building your house on a part-time basis, you know, just go into church on Sunday and that's the only time you spend with the Lord. And not gather with brothers and sisters, not just on Sundays, but throughout the week in um, Bible studies or prayer or devotionals or whatever you do even if it's just one or two because the word of god tells us with two or more are gathered in my name there i will be in their midst that means that jesus is dwelling with us and encouraging us and teaching us and guiding us in everything that we do so i pray my, my friends that um if you are have built your house on a sandy ground that the storms which are coming upon this world, um, which are already here, will easily tear them down. I pray that you will take and knock that house down, that faith that you have started, and rebuild it. Rebuild it on the firm foundation that is Jesus Christ. Use the resources that are required to have a strong faith. So I pray that the Lord will, will lead you, will guide you, will watch over you, will protect you, and will show you the way. God bless you, my friends.